Hello, my wonderful listener. This is a day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. On this note, I welcome you to Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice Voice of of Hope. Hope. A-W-R Ghana, Voice of Hope. Welcome to Daylight Magazine. Today's program is presented by... Wilhelm Swanika and Abigail in Kansa Mensa. You're looking very cheerful, Wilhelm. What's your secret? By the mercies of God. We thank God for his mercies and blessings. On today's program, we have reflections, a healthy you, and moments of truth. <laughs> I make the mistake of working on my own, but then I wait to see I can alone. You wrap your arms around me, then you comfort me and give me just what I need. Answer my prayer. You will answer answer my prayer. Oh, oh, oh. Is mine. Answer my prayer. Join us as we reflect on the lessons of life. Our next segment is Reflections. Jesus' power to forgive. And we take our reading from the book of Mark chapter 2, verse 10. And it reads, That ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go your way to your house. Unable to walk, the paralytic had to have his friends carry him everywhere. His four friends placed him on the stretcher. We don't know how far or how long they walked. Perhaps several days. Looking for Jesus, they finally found him. But he was in a house so filled with people that they couldn't even get in the door. But where there is a will, there is a way. When we are determined to see Jesus and have faith in what he can do, we will find ourselves able to enter his presence. So they climbed up to the flat roof. The men Carrying the stretcher, removed part of the roof and made a hole big enough to let the man down with ropes into Jesus' very presence. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. The biblical world considered sickness punishment for sin. Jesus knew what the paralytic thought and eased his mind by forgiving him. When we turn to Jesus, he forgives our sins and as a child of God, we then can endure the suffering. Jesus can heal as immediately as he did the paralytic or at a latter time, or maybe not at all. Whatever he sees will be for our eternal good. Theologians in the crowd accused Jesus of blasphemy because they did not acknowledge him as a son of God. They said, Who can forgive sins 
but God alone. Jesus, knowing how the risen said, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed, and walk. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go your way to your house. The people in that crowded house were amazed and glorified God. Whether our sins are little or big, respectable or despicable, secret or blatant, Jesus can and will forgive them. Our message today was by kind courtesy of Daniel Guild, and I am your presenter, Kofi Ba Nete. Welcome back. We continue with our programs on Daylight Magazine here at Adventist World Radio Ghana. A-W-R, Ghana. Voice of hope. Is this real? Is this real? Oh, friend, let's help prevent it now. Is this real? Is this real? Oh, let's help to fight it out. Abstain, abstain, be faithful to your partner. Say no, say no to extra marital sex. It's real, it's real, it kills, it kills. It's everyone's business. Oh, be wise, be wise, think twice, think twice. The decision is yours now. It's my business, it's your business. It's everyone's business. Abu, what do you do to keep your body healthy? I try and observe healthy habits like eating well and exercising. To know more, join us for Healthy You. Hello, listener. Thank you for tuning in once again. I'm happy to have you listen to us at this moment. Today I'm going to continue my conversation with Miss Winnie Benjamin, who is an international educator. She has a diverse background that enhances her ability to help and encourage us to make healthy choices. She has years of experience as a licensed clinical esthetician, trichologist, and a holistic health and wellness counselor. Miss Benjamin, you are welcome once again today to talk to us. Indeed, it's my pleasure. <laughs> okay. And I am your host, Belle Dolabiel. Please remain with us. Miss Benjamin, last time you talked about um, holistic health and wellness, and you also talked about the fact that obeying God's words in totality helps maintain one's health. Now, let's look about someone who does not even believe that God exists but enjoys good health. Well, I can say it's a blessing from God. Amen. But with such a person not knowing who even God is, Mm -hmm. not even having a relationship with God, what do you think, aside God's blessing, could be a contributory factor to the person's physical health? The most, the biggest part is, of course, God's mercy and his grace has fallen on the just and the unjust. And God has his reasons why he has kept that person in that position. That's one. But sometimes if you look closely, I've seen individuals who are well, not because of any doings of their own, but they have family members praying for them. Like I've seen mothers, let's even go back a little bit with David and Solomon. I remember it when God said to Solomon, it is for your father's David, you know, paraphrasing mm-hmm. it, it's because of your father, David, who is a man after my own heart, that I do this for you. And so many times you'll see people functioning, but they have prayer warriors, mothers, fathers, family members who God promised to bless their seed. 
that they live under such benefits. So I would encourage parents to consistently keep their children under prayer. That's one. Number three, mm-hmm. because of such prayer, many times that person's mind does not fall directly into that which is negative that may ever harbor you know, the manifestation of illness. They somehow don't live in regrets. They they have conditioned their mind to function in such a way. But that does not mean that they're healthy. You see, there's a difference between um, health and fitness. Okay. You could be healthy, but then you could be very, you're in poor fitness and vice versa. You might find someone uh, who has uh, physical strength. You see them running, they're moving, they look good. But if you do run a test on them, you would be surprised. Mm-hmm. There's diabetes, there's hypertension, there's everything going on with them and they're still functioning. So we cannot trust their parents. Okay. You have to get to know the whole person. Okay, okay. One may ask, what do I do that makes me sick spiritually? that can eventually also manifest in physical sickness? The biggest one, unforgiveness. Okay. Uh, Harboring uh, bitterness, Mm -hmm. anger. Uh, That's definitely, I would suggest, if someone does not want to fall into that category, is that they should memorize and keep as a guide Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It lists the fruits of...
Just keep on trying. We are expecting your emails, your letters, and your calls. Everybody said that anybody could do the important thing. Somebody should do. Everybody knows that anybody could do all the good things that Papa did. Well, the preacher came to me and said, "What I ought to do? If I wanted to make my religion true, he'd do it himself. But he really didn't. At the time, he said that the duty was mine. Oh no! Everybody said that anybody could do not me. the important thing. Oh, Somebody should do. Not Everybody knows that anybody could do all the good things that Bob Bob did. Why me? Everybody said that anybody oh, could do no. the important things that Bob Bob did. Everybody knows that anybody could do all the good things that Bob Bob did. Well, the deacon came by and said, give me a hand. If you want me going to the promised land, here is something that I don't have time to do. So I better give it to you. Everybody said that anybody could do the important thing. Somebody should do. Everybody knows that anybody could do all the good things that Bob Bob did. Not me. Everybody said that anybody could do the important thing. Somebody should do. Everybody knows that anybody could do all the good things that Bob Bob did. Well, I'm too busy, so I tell everybody. The work's got to get done by somebody. It could be done by anybody, but nobody, 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 nobody did. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, no. Everybody said that anybody could not do the important oh, thing. Oh, Somebody should do. Everybody knows that anybody could do all the good things that Bob Bob did. Everybody said that you are gonna. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God endure it forever. At this moment, let us listen to the word of God on moment of truth. Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Hello, dear listener. You're welcome to Moment of Truth. And my name is Samuel Okufo Asante. I am here today to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we would know him and be set free. I plead with you that you bow down your heads as we pray. Christ Jesus, you are the truth. We want to know you more, and so teach us now and forevermore. In your name do we pray, amen. I would like you to pick up your Bible and open to Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter 8, verses 13 to 16. Genesis, chapter 8, verses 13 to 16. Let us hear the word of God. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dried. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Amen. We caption this sermon, Grace Beyond the Surface. Grace beyond the surface. If you notice in the reading of the scriptures, we realize that, especially in the verses 13 and 14, there seem to be two different dates where the earth seemed to have been dried. Let us consider verse 13. And it came to pass in the 601st year. So it is like 601. In our time, perhaps we may say, say 2010. In the first month, the first day of the month. So it will be like 1st January 601. The waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked. Now let us look at verse 14. It says, And in the second month, 
in our time would say February. On the 27th day of the month, so it was like 27th February, the earth was dried. First, it says that like in our days, 1st January 601, the earth was dried. And then verse 14, 27th February 601, the earth was dried. So what are we experiencing here? Is the Bible contradicting itself? No, the Bible was not contradicting itself. But it was given something we call grace here that God bestowed on Noah. After Noah had spent so many years in the ark during the flood and the water had ceased coming down from the skies onto the earth as rain. And he had waited for so many days for the earth to dry so that he and the livestock in the ark could come out. Why then do we have this? If we should carefully read the text, we would realize what is really and actually saying, let us take the verse 13 again. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark. Now Noah wanted to come out and looked. And indeed, the surface of the ground was dry. Noah saw the surface of the ground dry. Now look at verse 14. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. So we realize that first it was the surface of the earth. But then in the second part, it was the earth that was dried. Now, Noah wanted to come out because he looked and saw the surface dried. To him, everything was okay. To him, it was a green light for him to come out of the ark and be emancipated after spending so many years in the ark. But suddenly, if you should read the Hebrew text, you realize that there was this pause. It's like God stopped him. Don't come out because it is just the surface. And then in the following month, on the 27th day, God himself spoke and said to Noah, Come out of the ark, your wife and your sons and your sons' wives together with you. That is grace beyond the surface. God extended his grace to Noah, who looked just at the surface and not beyond. If he had come out, he would have sunk in the earth. What are we saying here? There are so many times we make decisions out of the surface. There are so many times we make decisions by considering what we just look. There are so many times we take action because of what we see without knowing what is beyond the surface. But if only we will subject our will to God's will. If only we will leave our personal actions to God's saints. God will direct us as to when to take the actions. And when not to? Perhaps you may see a beautiful woman you intend marrying. To you, she may be good. Yes, she may truly be good in the surface. But deeply and inside her, you may not know. Dear friend, why don't you ask God in prayers to direct to you? And this God that I know full of grace will actually give you much insight beyond the surface. Perhaps it's a work you're trying to get. It's quite lucrative. You'll get much more money. You think it's good for you. It may be at a surface level. Why don't you open up and say, Christ, please teach me. And this Savior I know will give you answers beyond the surface. It may even be the academic career you like to embark on. Ask God and he will lead you beyond the surface. For he is God, full of grace beyond the surface. Don't go on your own way. For Proverbs 14.12 says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end is destruction. It is only the Lord that can direct us as to what to do, where to go, and when to take the action. Give him the chance and you make you. May God bless you. May he be with you. May he direct you. May he control your path. May he beckon you as you walk on this earth and give you grace beyond the surface. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been listening to Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we've discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio, 
Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 233-3070-510-58. If our lines are busy, don't give up. Just keep on trying. We are expecting your emails, your letters, and your calls. Today's program was presented by Abigail Inkansa Mensa and Wilhelm Swanika. Thank you and God bless you for staying with us. So we come your way once again. Stay blessed.